So we all know relationships are a lot of fun when things are going great, there's no problems. But then also relationships sometimes have issues. Really? Really? Who's this? Give me my, give me my really? phone. What are you taking my phone for? Amanda? Nicole? What are you all on my phone and for? And Brenda? Who are you? Wow. Wow. Oh, tonight, huh? Nine o'clock movies? Going to the movies tonight? Really? Wow. Oh, and dinner with Brenda at 10. Wow. Sometimes we suspect cheating. Sometimes y'all just can't get along. But when it comes to cheating, what do you do? Well, this month, we're talking about relationships and cheating, so you definitely don't want to miss this episode. again hitting the streets y'all know how much I love to do that and on this very bad weather day we're gonna talk about a very bad part of relationships cheating we're gonna see what people think about it in my opinion cheating is just um, another way of just like uh, obviously going to another person you know having fun with them but there's no really reason there's no real reason to cheat if you truly honestly love somebody from the bottom of your heart now you said having fun. What do you define as having fun? Because we can go see a movie and that'd be fun. Or you know, it can get a little physical. And that could be fun. Um, yeah, but like covering all those topics, um, <laughs> there's like, when I say have fun, <laughs> um, it can get physical uh -huh. from maybe kissing or then um, when it comes to the movies, you can go to public places where people might see you and that's another way of getting caught cheating. Not that I would ever do that. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it's just like something bad to do. If you really love somebody, you won't cheat. Um, I think cheating is when you uh, break the trust of the person that you're with by engaging in inappropriate um, behavior, whether it's emotional interaction or physical interaction, obviously. That trust factor, that's really important. I think that's key in cheating. When you get together with a spouse, obviously, and you decide to be monogamous and the other person steps out on you, um, I don't think it's right. I think that's not fair. So for you, it's only when you're married. Not when you're married. When you get together and you both agree that we're going to be together and we're going to be monogamous and you know be with only each other, that's what I define as cheating. When you step out on that person, you know. Okay, and for you, stepping out would be what exactly? Stepping out is having sex with someone else. Okay, that's clear and to the point. <laughs> no. No. Okay. Why not? Because what I do for a living, mm -hmm. sometimes I need to be a little flirtatious, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that I want to get in bed with them. It just means that I'm doing my job. What about flirting? You know, we all flirt from time to time, whether we're single. Sometimes in relationships, you tend to flirt. Some Another person said maybe occupational hazard. You got to flirt sometimes. So what do you think about flirting? Is that considered cheating? Is that coming close to the line? What do you think? Um, it's not necessarily cheating, but I think that's like everything starts with something. So I think that it can start with that if you, if you don't have those boundaries and just respecting that relationship by not allowing that flirtation to occur because that's what really leads to more. I agree. It's a starting point. So when it comes to flirting, is it more than just um, than like the touching? Because I'm clear you guys think that touching can be cheating, but like what if it's just like emotional or, or with words? You know, if a, if a guy's like talking to you and he's like, hey cutie, you looking good. Yeah, I like them purple sneaks you got, them. like all of that. Is that considered that kind of flirting, cheating for you, for you to like engage in that? Yeah, I think that's like flirting. If you're doing it like right in front of my face, like yeah, that's disrespectful and flirting. What about you guys? Do you consider flirting cheating? Um, well, but maybe in, in some cases. Um, I, I pretty pretty much like if you're flirting with someone that you're with, like your your girl is right 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 next to you, and you're flirting with that person, then yeah, this I, I consider it like an act of cheating. So only if your girlfriend is right next to you. Uh, and s no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I just wanted to check because you said if she was right next to you, I was a little I don't know about that. So in, in secret, it's okay. In that case, you can feel some negative energy coming from that. 
person, like, you know you're looking at them, like, they're looking at you. And yeah, so it's cheating. What about you, Tim? I think flirting is flirting. As long as you're not touching or nothing, a little, hey, you look cute. That's nice. <laughs> I like that. A little smile here and there. That's, that's, that's nothing. That's okay. light. <laughs> All right. What about you? Yeah, there's definitely a line that you can't cross. Okay. And you and your spouse have to agree upon what, what line that is. Welcome to the show. So this month we are talking about cheating. So I have two guests with me. Thank you guys for coming to the show, Andre and Stephanie. You're welcome. Thank you for you're, having us, Jessica. You're welcome. So we all know cheating in relationships is a very common thing that happens. But we're going to explore it in this month's topic. So let's talk. What is cheating exactly to us? Go ahead, Andre. You look like you want, you're ready to talk about it. What do you think cheating is? I was actually worried about you know ladies first. Oh, um, look at you being a gentleman. You know, I, I think cheating, it de cheating is, it depends on the person. Mm -hmm. Some men or uh, females define cheating differently. Okay. Some define cheating as the actual physical intimacy mm -hmm. of sex, which is cheating. Right. Other people define it as a conversation or going out. Right. And, you know, with the conversation piece, I think that that dives into the emotional side that some people might consider cheating. Because sometimes when we are talking with a person, you know, we grow a bond. And, you know, sometimes if you're in a relationship, people might think, OK, you're a little too close to this person, you know, especially if they're not a friend and especially if you're attracted to them. So we can cross the line to become emotional cheating. So what is it you want to say, Stephanie? A lot of times when you have conversations with individuals, it can be taken out of context. Mm. So you can be having a conversation with someone and um, it be, you know, an individual see it as cheating when really, initially, it's innocent. So there's so many different avenues as to how cheating is very a sensitive topic today. Make sense? Yeah, yeah, of course. And also, I think people's definition of the certain things that are considered cheating, like you were saying, the different stuff like is hand holding cheating, is you know, gently like touching your hand as you're talking, like is that on the lines of flirting? And that's actually what I mean. Doing that stuff is getting close to flirting. So let's talk about that. It's flirting cheating. You know, when people do things like that. I mean some people think it's innocent and some people say, mm. I don't think I don't think flirting is cheating. I mm -hmm. think it depends how deep you go with it. For instance, if um, my significant other is out with her, her friends, mm -hmm. and I tell her, if a guy want to buy you a drink, let him buy you a drink. And really? Come home to me. Of course. Okay, so that you're save, comfortable. That saves her money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. that, that's how I look at it. Um, sometimes flirting, it can get you in trouble. So you got to, it's kind of like a fine line, but I think everybody wants to feel like they still got it. That's know. true. Yeah. What do you think, Steph? I agree with Andre, and with flirting, as he stated, I, flirting is not cheating. It's the seed that can be planted, and if you nurture it, then it, you know, it can destroy relationships, marriages, and things of that nature. So flirting is not cheating, but that seed that's planted, and if you, you know, once it's embedded in your mind, mm -hmm. and you, you know, go along paths of um, nurturing it later on, then it can cause, you know, problems. So I'm gonna share with you a definition. I looked up what flirting means, and according to the the Webster Marion um, version, it says to behave in a way that shows a sexual attraction for someone, but is not meant to be taken seriously. Now. I've always kind of defined flirting as you do that when you're attracted and you want to go further with somebody. So it's almost like, hey, you know, I'm feeling you. I just want to let you know. So you flirt with them. But according to this definition, it tells me it's not meant to be taken seriously. So the only part to me that would still make it dangerous is because within that definition, it mentions you being attracted. And like you said, you plant that seed. So I think that it's a dangerous thing to do, even if it is innocent. You know, I'm not sure if I be okay though because the thing is like say for instance your example like say then they want to take her number then what i mean that's that's different mm -hmm. um you're not supposed to give the number out but if a guy because a lot of times guys just want to show a woman you know that she's beautiful mm -hmm. you know so if you're out and a guy says hey you know might i buy you a drink I, me per i don't see anything wrong with it mm -hmm. i wouldn't do it because mm -hmm. it's just a, a marriage it's a little mm -hmm. different but if she was out and a guy approached and wanted to offer a drink, save your money. Okay, so you think it's different for a man or a woman? It can be taken that. I mean, I know it's a mm -hmm. catch-22, but mm -hmm. at this time, it's a society we live in, so things will always be taken differently when it comes to men and women. Okay, so it all depends. Go ahead. And what then you also, you can clean it up. 
-hmm. like his wife is mar they're married mm -hmm. um, she can always clean it up and say or in, in the instance of a single woman, you can say, yes, I'm, um, no, I'm sorry, I'm not available. Or with a married woman, you can say, yeah, thank you, but I'm married, mm -hmm. and show them the ring, you know, and hope that that individual will respect that she's married or she's in a relationship with a significant other. Mm -hmm. Make sense? Yes. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so it's all about how you handle it that will then define whether or not you're cheating. And then also, I think when you brought up your example, it's good to say that when you're in a relationship, the relationship has to define what cheating is. I think um, every relationship should have a definition, should mm -hmm. have a goal to it. Because mm -hmm. if you're just dating, there's no goal. Mm -hmm. So there's always an opening for cheating if there's no goal at the end. Your goal should be marriage. And if your goal mm -hmm. is not marriage, then the opportunity to cheat will always present itself. Right. Because there's no definition and there's nothing behind it. Exactly. All right, guys. I know we can keep going with this conversation, but I thank you both so much for joining me today on the show. And don't you go anywhere, because up next, we have a couple, a young couple that's engaged who hasn't cheated at all, and they've been together for four years. So let's talk to them and see how they did it. We'll be right back. Is it okay for a guy to have a friend that's a girl, though? I mean, yeah, but it depends on what kind of level y'all friendship is on. Now, let me ask you something, because I know this is kind of common with guys sometimes. Say that a girl doesn't want to give it up. Do you think that that's a good reason to cheat? Or do you think that even plays a big part in a relationship that might make a person cheat? Depending on the guy. Mm -hmm. Depending on some guys will probably wait. Or some guys will probably just decide to cheat because they're not with the female for that same reason. So if they're just gonna cheat on a female because of the fact that she don't want to give it up, that should already tell the female that's that's not what he was there for. Mm. So very true, and I wish more people would you know think about that because that's true. A real guy who likes you for you, they're not gonna care about that, yeah. or at least they're not gonna leave for that reason. You know what I mean? Go first is the shy one. <laughs> um, flirting, like mex like text messages between another female. Okay, so any female or is it what the text message says? Because what if it's a friend? Well, yeah, but it depends on what type of level you take it to. Are you talking about like sexting? Oh, you said what type of friend? Yeah. Okay. Friends. Everybody got those best friends. Mm -hmm. I don't like those. Yes. I've never cheated. <laughs> I've been cheated on before. Okay, and I'm sorry. I know that that wasn't a good experience. No, no, I'm, I don't. I don't feel bad about it. Okay. I mean, she could kick rocks for all I care right now, but um. Have you ever experienced cheating? Yes, I have. Yes, I have. I'm human. Okay. So yes, I have. I've cheated and I've been cheated on, and it's not a pretty sight. Mm -mm. No. All right. Thank you for your honesty. Mm -hmm. All right. So on this windy day, I'm still talking to people. So I ran into this lady. You've been married for how long? I've been married for uh, 11 years, but together with my husband, boyfriend, fiance for 17. Wow, that's a long relationship. Yes, it is. Now let me ask you, what is your opinion? <laughs> What is your opinion on cheating? Um, it's not a good thing. I think it's very hurtful and I think it's hard for people to surpass that. Once you lose the trust, it's really hard to gain that back. I'm also, I also happen to be a therapist. Oh, okay. So, um, you know, we encounter this a lot and it's, it's, it's unfortunate because we learn how hard it is for people to really get over it and it takes a long time and you have to rebuild a brand new relationship, honestly. But I feel like um, everyone's human, mm -hmm. so for some people, they wouldn't take back someone that's cheated on them. Other people, it's different, so. And that's true, and you know, I've had that thought, would you? Because I've, I've also said out my mouth, when I'm, and when I'm married, if you cheat on me, it's over. You know, even the Bible says it's okay, we're divorcing. But also, some people that have managed to press through it, whether they're married or not married. So I think it's an interesting point that you brought up. It's with you being in a relationship for so long, how do you guys define cheating for your relationship? Because all those years, I, I have to say, honestly, there, I know there has to, to have been some temptation at some point. Oh yeah, I mean, I was in college when we, you know, he was here and I was away in college, but um, I've always been faithful. Okay. Um, hope he's watching. <laughs> putting that out there. Uh, putting that out there. You. But I mean, I think cheating, um, I think it's okay to look at other people and to find people attractive and things like that, but I think you, you're really crossing boundaries when, you know, kissing, touching. I think some flirting's okay, but if it goes too far, then 
you know, is obviously cheating for me. So, um, kissing, yeah, that's it. Like, that's cheating. So I kissing, people, like any contact like that is cheating. Going out, hanging out, having lunch, that's fine. You know, you can have friends. Okay. You know, as long as there's common respect, I trust him, you trust me, that's fine. Now, if you are holding hands, you're kissing, that's leading somewhere. Somewhere you don't want to do that. Right, and I, I completely agree. Thank you so much for taking the time to share. And I'm so glad to hear that there is a long lasting relationship out there. I mean, I know it happens, but it's nice to run into one. It is work, but you know, if you really love each other and you really want that, and that's what you want for your family and your children, then you just have to be dedicated to that and really put the hard work in. I love that. I love that. She put it the best way. It takes work, but as long as you're dedicated and there is love, you can do it. Alright, we are all done with these hit the streets. So I'm about to go inside. It's cold and it's raining and I just want some hot cocoa. <laughs> Alright guys, hope you're enjoying the show. Cheating is such a serious thing. Um, I've never experienced it, at least to my knowledge. Never experienced it. And I <laughs> I definitely don't want to. It's definitely a very um, hurtful thing to do. I believe that you should be faithful in a relationship and that it takes work. So if there's issues, something going on that might lead you to want to cheat, you should definitely have that conversation. That's my thought on it. All right, so we're going to get back to the show. And we're back on the show with me right now are Alicia and Kyle. Thank you guys for joining me. For having us. Thank you for having us. So you guys have been engaged and you've been in, been together for four years, right? That's right. Four years. And you guys have managed to not cheat at all in your relationship. 100% right. Okay, I was about to say, she looked for a second like, huh? <laughs> I was saying, no, no, we talked about this. Okay, so yes. So tell me, what is cheating to you? How do you guys define cheating? Um, cheating to me, it's like a two-step process. Mm. First, it's the thought, mm -hmm. like the reservation, and then it's the action. Okay. Um, thoughts are very, very hard to control. Mm -hmm. uh, emotions are very hard to control. Mm. Actions, by the way, are fairly easy to control. You mm -hmm. should be able to control yourself in right. situations like that. What about you, Alicia? I agree. Um, nothing really to add on. It, it really does start with the thought, and a lot of times we don't have power over our thoughts, but it's how we act on those thoughts. Okay. Things are going to pop into your head. You are going to look at things and see things that may intrigue you, but it's how you act on that. So for the purpose of your relationship, though, is it defined as cheating between you two once you act on the thought, or is it even just having the thought you guys consider cheating in your relationship? I would say the action. See, for me, I think it would be part of the thought. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a woman's mind, I feel like you have a lot of power. Okay. Okay. And that's a good point because you have influence over them if they're willing to, to allow you to be that close. And if you're taking up that much reservation in their head, then, that, then you're also taking a reservation in their heart, exactly. partly. Exactly. So, okay, so how have you guys avoided it? in your relationship, you know, throughout all the temptation that we have. I mean, you two are young and a good looking couple. I mean, we're all the same age, but you know, it's kind of tough, you know, in the <laughs> world we live in, you know, sex is thrown in our face all the time. So how have you guys avoided it? I would say based on my past, based on my experiences with past relationships, mm -hmm. past men, where I've been, I know where I want to be. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not something that I would take a chance on. My relationship is not something that I would want to jeopardize right. by indulging on a fantasy. Mm -hmm. So it's because of your love for your relationship and what you've done in the past. You exactly. Know it's not worth it. I feel I have everything I need right here. Mm -hmm. um, of course, there's always going to be something that looks better at the time or, you know, I'm feeling some type of way mm -hmm. and I just get a thought and I want to do something. No, um, I'm not really willing to risk a very, very good thing mm -hmm. because I know where I have been and I know where I'd like to be. Right. So you ha I have to keep that in the front of my mind always. Right. And I think that that's important in relationships, especially, you know, long ones, like four years. You know, I'm in a long relationship like that. We've been together for going on four years. And so that's definitely something that we have to remember in order to keep 
you know, as faithful to each other because we are human, you don't have those thoughts. Let me ask you, because I know during the course of your relationship, um, you had a child. So with the effects of a woman going through pregnancy and having a baby, our body changes, our hormones go crazy. Like, how did you, Kyle, manage to not, you know, feel tempted and go out? Like, how did, or, or actually, did that even affect, you know, your relationship? And Alicia, you can chime in on that thought. Um, having a son definitely affected our relationship. Uh, we don't have as much time as we'd like mm -hmm. uh, to ourselves, to spend with ourselves, to work on ourselves. Um, most of our time is diverted because uh, our son is all over the place. Mm -hmm. But um, we just have to work very, very hard and try to find ways to make time, mm -hmm. period. You, know, you make time for what you really want. Exactly. So um, in, in terms of everything else... I would say it's small stuff. I think it's, it's remembering intimacy mm -hmm. and um not really deep but like there's a trail by our house that we walk on frequently mm -hmm. so remembering to hold each other's hands or when we're driving in the car you know putting your hand on his lap or just remembering small things to kind of bring you closer even in the midst of all the chaotic things that happen in your life mm -hmm. now what about during the actual pregnancy like the physical part of her like did that ever get to you like oh he went through it <laughs> <laughs> um yes I definitely went through it um it was just it was just hard mm -hmm. um I was in a familiar unfamiliar place um never been there before uh I really didn't have a plan um I really didn't know what to do pretty much I just had to fall on my face as much as I had to um and when you say that you mean pray okay um, it's, it's all God. God's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, I have to give all the credit to him a little bit for ourselves, but he gets more. Right. Absolutely. So the help of God and, and you guys remembering the small things that has helped you guys even during that, that transition in your relationship of being pregnant and having a son, just remembering each other. And I think that's important in relationships because even without, you know, a child, that's something I think you have to do over the course of your relationship because life can get busy between work and other obligations. Oh, most it's definitely. important to remember to do the small things that keeps the relationship alive and remembering each other. Oh. So on that note, what would you guys say is the thing that, that keeps the spark alive in your relationship? Communication. Um, I feel that that's key. If I don't know what she likes, mm -hmm. how can I make her happy? Mm -hmm. um, I, I think we still try to impress each other mm -hmm. because, you know, when you've been with someone for a long time, you get comfortable right. and the things you did to get them, you don't do those things anymore. Mm -hmm. So now you're just like you you know, going through the motions. Right. Going through the motions. Um, so we, you know, we try to set a little time, maybe do a little date or... Something as small as just having dinner ready mm -hmm. when one of us are home, um, sit and watch each other's favorite show, uh, favorite snack, mm -hmm. anything, literally any little thing <laughs> that can put the smile on uh, one of our faces, we try to do. What about you, Alicia? The spark. I, I would say he, for me, he really keeps the spark going for me. I'm, I'm pretty rigid, so mm -hmm. he's, he's really laid back. And the fact that he's able to laugh at himself mm -hmm. helps me be more laid back and, and helps me forget about all that's going around us. And it helps me see him in, in a lighter way. Mm -hmm. um, so the fact that he's so laid back and he is a funny guy, um, that's, what keep the, that's what keeps the spark going for me. Good. I always say you can't take yourself too seriously. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it has to be fun. You'll drive yourself crazy. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You guys balance each other out. All right. Wonderful. Thank you guys for coming and, and sharing more about your, your personal relationship and how you guys have managed to avoid cheating.